Good evening, Willowdale, and welcome to Meet Your Neighbor, NeighborLink North York's weekly interview series. Every Monday, we introduce you to a new neighbor in the spirit of building a more connected community, because life is better when you know your neighbors. This evening, we're joined by Nick D'Amico. Nick is the president of the Anne Marie D'Amico Foundation, which was created in honor of his sister, who was tragically killed in the Young Street van attack in 2018. Nick's drive for philanthropy is rooted in creating a lasting legacy for his sister through helping others. The Anne Marie D'Amico Foundation is working towards helping women and children live free of violence by raising funds for the North York Women's Shelter. We're so looking forward to talking to Nick about the incredible work the foundation is doing and their upcoming fundraising event, The Turtle Project, a celebration of inner strength, which is happening on December 3rd. Before we bring out Nick, allow me to introduce our host, Lily Chang. Hey, Lily. Hi, Sebastian. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to uh, to watch you and Nick uh, catch up and to 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 hear about this story. I think it's it's a time that we um, unfortunately have to to remember and think about, but to you know to watch people who who turn this into something so positive um, is inspiring. So I'll mm -hmm. uh, I'll get out of your hair and um, enjoy the conversation. Thanks. Thanks, Sebastian. And hello, happy Monday, fellow Willowdalers. It's another episode of Meet Your Neighbor. And I really feel like Nick and his family are honorary neighbors of Willowdale. Um, they spent some time here, considerable time, especially in the aftermath of the Young Street tragedy. And even amidst their own grief, they put so much heart, time, and energy into helping us as a community uh, steer our efforts to ensure that all of the victims and their families were properly honored and cared for uh, as we tried to navigate as a community. And so I had the uh, I don't know if pleasure is the right word. I mean, it was a gift to meet them, but obviously we wouldn't, I would have ha loved to have met them under different circumstances. But I met the D'Amico family uh, after the Young Street tragedy. And what struck me was their bond for each other, how much you could just tell that they were loving and supporting each other. And then their inner strength that, uh, you know, shone through, uh, and even more so when we started to hear about the D'Amico Foundation and then the Turtle Project. So I am so grateful for this opportunity and so grateful that Nick said yes to joining us. So let's give a warm welcome to Nick D'Amico. Hi, Nick. Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining us. I'm sure you are, you know, you're ramping up, gearing up for December 3rd, which is uh, a little, you know, more than a week away. So tell me, you know, what is the buzz happening around this wonderful turtle project, which is an evening of entertainment that is going to raise some important funds for the North York Women's Shelter? Well, thanks, Lily. Yeah, I know it's, first off, it's great to be here. Thanks for, for having me on and nice to catch up with you, like Sebastian said earlier. And uh, yeah, the Turtle Project is is really the pinnacle event for the for the foundation. And it's held every year on my sister's birthday on December 3rd. And we kind of had this idea that we wanted to do something special on her birthday, you know, kind of start off with an evening of just jazz and rock and roll. And we started talking about it more. We said, let's let's do something more. Let's do something more. Let's get let's get involved. Let's do something good for the community. Let's you know create a legacy for my sister. So we came up with this evening of, of live entertainment, and essentially it's it's a variety of performers, just like it sounds like, and it's it's um, dancers, singers, uh, a magician, comedian, and they're just all coming together in an evening of just real positivity, and just really trying to get the uh, get bring bring everyone's spirits up. We've all been kind of locked down for for months, but more so than that, just you know, celebrate our own inner strength and, and look at the positives in life and, you know, learning that we can do anything if we just kind of uh, stay positive. So it's happening on December 3rd at downtown Meridian Hall. And we've got an incredible cast uh, this year hosted by Tara Sloan, um, some up and coming Canadian artists, uh, Ralph, Posey, Crash Adams, um, Spadone is our is our comedian and uh, North Fire Circus going to have a great kind of fire, fire kind of performance, actually probably LED lights because I don't think we can get fire. Uh, in downtown in, in this in the, in the theater but yeah it's just going to be a, an incredible evening well that sounds so exciting and 
I can't help but think it's like you are throwing a birthday party for Anne Marie. Um, unfortunately, she can't be there, but uh, you know, I went to the first one um, and it was such a beautiful mix of, I mean, it was so fun and you just, you couldn't really guess what was going to happen next. Uh, and that's something that's kind of rare on the entertainment scene now where, you know, for one ticket, you get such a wide variety of entertainment. And I think we're all so hungry for something live now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just so much Zoom and so much virtual. Totally. Yeah. And that was kind of our idea. There's going to be something for everyone when you come to this event. And we really wanted to incorporate different talents and incorporate different ways uh, of, of bringing them, you know, together and weaving the night so that it really, and we, and, and we were kind of blown away with just how, how seamless the night was and how incredible everything kind of came together. And, you know, just to have something like that, just to, you know, bring people off their seats, bring them to something fresh and new and exciting and really do this, have a fundraiser in a different way where people actually want to come out and put this in their calendar every year to say, I'm going to be at the total project because I had such a good time and I know where the money's going, but and, and just as, just as important, it's just going to be an incredible evening of celebration and enjoyment. So I'm glad to hear you say that because we felt the same way. Yeah, I feel like you've really put together a signature event. Um, and so it's oh, something you. people can count on. Yeah. Thank and, you. The, you know, it just strikes me that the wide variety of the night really kind of captures your sister. Uh, you know, just hearing like she was great at Taekwondo. She played on the billiards team. She sang karaoke. She volunteered with the, you know, Tennis Canada. Right. And she built houses in the Dominican Republic. I, I, when I think about everything your sister has done in her life, uh, it's just so wide ranging. It could be like 10 people have done, you know, she's already mm -hmm. lived 10 lifetimes with all the adventures that she had in her life. Um, and, you know, how much has that breadth of passion inspired you in shaping this project? Oh, it's, it's definitely a part of it. And we said that we want this to embody her spirit. We want this to embody who she was as an individual. And like you said, there was really nothing she wouldn't enjoy. There was really nothing she wouldn't go out and do and be her, do her best and be her best and just put her whole heart and soul into it. So... I think this is exactly what the evening has become and is because of who she was. And it's, you know, it's just for us, for us personally, especially myself and my family, like, you know, we were, we were, we're such a tight knit family and, uh, you know, for her to kind of be, um, what's the word resembled through the music and through the performances just really kind of hits home for us as well. Mm. So, you know, the, meaning behind the turtle project is it's from Anne Marie's childhood nickname. Can you tell yeah. me a little more about that? Yeah, that was, you know, it's funny because it if that nickname evolved, like we used to call us, so there's so many variations of it because we just kind of started slapping different words together to kind of call to call her, uh, you know, anything that resembled turtle, but essentially it was, she was, I th she must have been about six or seven years old, and she was sitting at the dinner table with my grandfather, no, no, in the Italian culture. And we were all kind of done, finished eating, and she was, we we're getting ready to go, and she was still sitting there. And my grandfather just got fed up and, you know, just kind of monotony, monotonously said, you know, tartaruga, which means turtle in Italian, and she just became turtle. So that's kind of how the name. Oh. Uh, became a such and she was kind of this slow methodical person in general but i think my grandfather my nonno kind of hit it hit it on the head with uh with that comment oh uh, and that's just so sweet i mean just hearing that Tataruko, and like how uh you know a nickname really can really endear someone to you but now this nickname you know has gone even further because in naming it you know you've said that this also symbolizes the stability and longevity of what you hope to do in this foundation uh, and just the desire to support women and children who are facing violence. Uh, how did you guys come to that choice? Because I'm sure, you know, 
there was a lot of processing that you were going internally uh, before you were able to kind of map a trajectory for this foundation. How did you land on this cause? Well, I, unfortunately, you know, we came on, we landed on this cause because of, you know, how everything developed with, with her, with her death and the, and the, 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 the 10 that got killed in the 16, well, now 11, I guess, and, and, and 16 that were injured. It was all motivated by this idea of you know hatred against women and violence against women, and then we said you know we're, we're just we just can't stand for that. We, we kind of tried to find ways you know to kind of you know who she was as a person, celebrate things. We kept coming back to this, and this was such a dark moment for Toronto, and it was such a you know incredibly dark moment for my family. And we said we, you know I think the most powerful thing we can do is take that what happened and just flip it on its head. And let's be let's be the story of hope and inspiration. Let this foundation be that story of hope and inspiration. And let's help these women and children who are in this situation because we don't want anyone to have to go through this again. And we want to try and protect these people as much as we can. So that's really where it came came from. And you know, we it was it was a pretty it, it didn't take long for us to come to that conclusion. And and you know, the North Oak Women's Shelter is just is, is a perfect place for us to support because they do such great work for these women and children. And it's a very timely investment, um, especially during COVID, as we know, the rise in demand for spaces in the shelter system has far outpaced the capacity. So just, you know, any extra support that any shelter can get uh, means that more women and children can be housed. and. You know, even in the work that we've done, you know, we've been on the phone trying to find a shelter for women yeah. and they've had to take buses or uh, not buses, sorry, to take a taxi uh, an hour away because there's nothing available in, in the immediate area. So um, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, obviously no one could have known that this was going to happen at the time that you decided. but. Um, it, there's a serendipitous alignment in the, the fact that you are investing in a thing that really needs investing in right now. So thank you. Yeah, no, that's, thank you for, thank you. It definitely, it needs, needs our attention more than ever. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, what is interesting to me and what I'd love to, you know, learn about from you and from your family is how did you navigate those first few months? Uh, and because I know that the foundation, the idea of the foundation is not something that came a year later. It was actually in the very soon after, um, you know, the, the journey of grief began that you were already kind of thinking about this foundation. Um, how did that come to be for your family that, uh, it, it, I think like in the depths of that pain, there was a choice, like we're in so much pain, but we're going to choose a path of light and hope. What was it that enabled you to do that as a family? Well, I think first and foremost, we, we wanted to keep her alive with us and we wanted her to continue, we wanted to move forward with her. We didn't want to forget her. We didn't want to leave her behind. We didn't want to, you know, move on. We want to move. We want to move forward with her. So it really it started with that. That was the biggest, the biggest catalyst for us. And we wanted to find something that we could really kind of, you know, you know, sink our teeth into, so to speak, to kind of say what, you know, what's the best course of action and. It was actually my dad. We all, we all kind of wanted to do something, and my dad kind of started with the idea of the turtle project, and then we got attached to the to the, the cause and North Oakland Shelter, and then like it just kind of became a bit of a snowball. We said, well, let's just keep going. What about this? What about this? Let's go there. Let's try this. Let's and, and it just kind of kept kept moving forward and kept propelling us forward. And so you know we have the you know, my, my sister's legacy that we want to continue, but the cause and the North Oakland Shelter and you know, us doing it together, everything kind of tied in together and just made this keep keep going and kept propelling us. So if it wasn't one thing, it was another thing. And we just kept doing it and kept moving. Mm. It's very inspiring to all of us who have kind of, you know, perhaps watched your journey from a distance to see 
just how bonded you have been through, because tragedy can sometimes really challenge and separate relationships. Uh, but I've seen your family really hold on to each other and, and then kind of explode out into the world with the love that you have. I, you know, it's a blessing for our community to have just uh, seen a family that has so much love, not just for each other, but for, you know, the world at large, for the women, for the community. Yeah, no, thank you. This, this was, I always, I always consider myself privileged that my parents kind of instilled that at us at a young age and their, and my grandparents instilled them, instilled that in them at a young age. So it's, it's not something that kind of came overnight, I guess you can say. I think it was something that was just ingrained to us, ingrained within us at a young age. It was just family is everything. It was mm -hmm. just, there was no real, nothing trumps family. And, and that's just, you know, nothing, even something like this, it just, it can't, it can't break that bond. Uh, you know, it's been said um, that it's, it's uh, better to give than to receive. And I know like in the work that I've done, sometimes I'm really humbled because I think I'm giving, but in the end, I'm really receiving so much. And I wonder, you know, in some way, this foundation and the Turtle Project and its establishment, it's its almost like it's a gift that Anne-Marie is given, giving to you uh, from where she is now. And, you know, what has the gift of this journey been for you in establishing this foundation and, and starting this, you know, signature entertainment event that, uh, you know, is not just raising money, but is uh, a great night out. Uh, what has the gift the gift been for the, you in terms of your personal journey? So I would, it's, you know, that's several points. Number one, uh, to tying the incident back into you know this this whole journey, my sister has become a completely different. Um, um, uh, a being or, or essence for me, I guess you can call it. like, she, it, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it, but the more I get involved, the more I do, the more she's here. Like it's, it's like she's present. Like she really is present with all this. And I, I didn't, I really didn't think it would turn to that. I didn't really think it'd become anything quite so powerful and quite so um, um, deep within me, but it, it really feels like I'm, I'm still here with her. Like, Maybe I don't have her body here. I don't even not her spirit, but just what we're doing. She just feels like she's she's always around us. So I'd say that is a mm. gift that I'm very very lucky to say I have. And and I would say another gift. You know, we didn't get to meet. A, we don't get to meet a lot of the women and children at the shelter because of privacy reasons, and and rightfully so. But the staff at the shelter are phenomenal, and the way they care, and the way they want to make the lives better of these women and children has really got me more attached to the cause and really got me understanding that we can we can do real good here we can do real good we don't have to be we can just support them support the north oak women's shelter and what they're doing and really get engaged from from that level and really start learning a lot more and how much impact you can actually have on a person's life so like there's no there's it was a friends episode it was like there's no selfless selfless good deed and but in, in essence, it is, but it isn't because it's 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 what you receive as as gratitude. That's 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 selfless, right? So I would say I'm much more grateful for for a lot of things in life. Mm, that's so beautiful, and I I really do believe that her spirit does live on, uh, and in a way, I think maybe what you're saying is it's even more magnified, right? It, because now it shines for so many more people than just the people who knew her. And like, you know, you see yeah. the pictures of her and her smile is just so radiant. Uh, and I do feel that the work that you're doing as a family, it magnifies the spirit of who she was. Yeah. I, I would almost say who she is now is, is more, I'm trying to find the right word. It's nine 30 at night. Right? The words aren't coming to me, but she's like, <laughs> She's more, not prevalent, but she's like bigger than the pictures. Like she's, mm -hmm. she's here more than she would be if she was sitting beside me. I, it gets, I, I, it's, 
that's what that's what it is for me. That's what it's become for me. And like I said, I never expected it to become that that way. But yeah, absolutely. And and having her name attached to doing good for others, I mean, that's that's who she was about. So why not continue that forward? Yeah, like when I read about her, you know, just the love of volunteering, it's amazing. You know, she volunteered with Tennis Canada. She was in Big the Brothers Big Sisters, and she traveled to the Dominican Republic to build houses. Uh, why did she love serving so much? I think she just found the positive in 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 everything and anything. There was the positive of going there and doing something good for someone else, but it was the positive of, you know, an adventure. It was a positive of doing it together with someone else and being a part of, you know, a community in in that in that sense and being a part of doing it with others as well. That really got her, you know, to to enjoy. It. I mean, you know, going Dominican, you get to go to Dominican, but that's not why she did it. She got to do. She went there because she got to help others, be a part of community, and just really, you know, it's 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 kind of multifaceted in that sense. What a zest for life. That's, you know, what I think yeah. when I think of her. It's, it's, we have an image of her actually, and I think it's maybe been shown a couple of times where she's um, <laughs> she's bungee jumping and she's holding a, a, can, a can of, can of, of Molson Canadian and like doing like this funny pose. And <laughs> just like completely, like if you want to know who she was as a person, that image said everything. She went, she, she went to this cheese rolling competition in in england where they roll a block of cheese down a hill and you have to go chase it like that was like, <laughs> like she's just like she's like a zest for life is is the best way to put it wow and in a way have you felt like you know leading a foundation has been kind of a bungee jump for you yeah, absolutely oh my goodness yeah it's you know you it there's it's a business with a heart like we're, we're here to raise money for the shelter, but we're not here to just, it's not about the bottom line. The most important thing is our cause and what we're doing. So although you, you have to have the financial wherewithal, you also are, are, are doing it to make sure you're helping others. And that's what really is the fabric of it all. And, you know, it takes a lot of energy and a lot more effort than I ever thought it would have. And we're all in it together. So my mom, my dad, my sister, my uncle's involved, you know, even our family members who are not quite so attached to the, are not involved as a board member are, are, are all participating and all involved in it. So it's, 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 you know, there's a lot, a lot of hands that need to be there. Do you think that this foundation and this project has helped your family in the grieving process? Yes. I would say yes. I would say at times we take on too much. And I think at some times we have to take a step back because it gets very emotional, because it gets overwhelming. But 1,000% uh, one, 1, um, it's helped us move forward because, you know, we get to have, excuse me, her name, you know, over here on, on you know, attached to the foundation. We get to have her, her names on the community collective, the Emory D'Amigo Community Collective. We have an event revolved around her, her her birthday, so it's it's bringing more positivity to 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 those situations rather than negativity. And that's that is such a beautiful logo, um, which has her initials on it. Who designed that logo? So it was actually someone on our board. So at Tony Tony Comparelli, who's our, our chairman, he was the one who said, "What do you guys think of this logo?" Well, like that is absolutely perfect. That couldn't you couldn't have picked it. As soon as everyone saw it, we said that's that's it. That's mm. perfect. So I just uh, you know I think back to when I first met you and I met your dad um, and your mom. It was during these meetings that we had to just navigate how we were going to care for the community and honor the victims through, you know I think we had some vigils and we. Um, had a, a community picnic, and then a year later we had community dinners. But throughout that uh, process, I felt like, you know, you guys really had a heart also for Willowdale that, um, you know, you cared about how the community was healing, um, even though, you know, your pain is you know, arguably far greater, but you still had this desire to care for Willowdale. Uh, how, you know, what are some, I guess, reflections that you have about 
the neighborhoods through that journey because you walk very closely with our community for for quite a while. Yeah, I would say I I that was the first time. Yeah, I would say that's that's the first time I really got involved in anything other than you know you know my personal preferences, whether it was tennis or an organization or something like that, or beyond family. It's the first time I actually got involved from that traditional community perspective. And I was, I, I, I was so touched by just how much everyone cared. There was 20 to 25 people on that steering committee. And I was just blown away with the attention to detail that people, you know, paid uh, the, the attention to detail and how people actually cared about doing the right thing for the community, for people who were affected or maybe not even not, not affected, but people who were affected by that day and how we wanted to kind of make that an, a moment to kind of help and be a part of the solution and be a part of the, of the healing rather than just kind of, you know, this is one year, we're going to move on for it. It was a really involved process that I just, I, I was, uh, I didn't. I didn't realize existed, and I was, you know, very pleasantly surprised to be a part of it, and, and so grateful to have met people like you, and that could, you know, help steer that and kind of drive it in the right direction. And uh, I guess you know, a lot of Willowdalers are are watching this. Uh, what were your impressions of Willowdale? Because um, perhaps you had not hung out here that much uh, until then. Uh, my impressions. After or before? Um, I guess after, when when you had more engagement with the neighborhood, what were your impressions of this this community, this neighborhood? Well, it's 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 definitely multicultural, which I you know kind of goes without saying across Toronto. But uh, I got to see that firsthand. Um, I got to see just how much, like I said before, just the actual. The, the, the care that, that people have for each other, how everyone does feel like this kind of, you know, bit of a kind of feels like a neighbor. And I kind of, I, I kind of, my, my vision of, or my original idea of Villadale was kind of, you know, Young Street and Young Street between Shepherd and, and Finch for that matter. And just to realize there's actually a heart behind that. It's not just, you know, stores, not just retail stores and big brand names. There are homes on the other side of those, of those, of those stores of those brand names and they care about each other. I would actually say that it was this wound on our main street um, happening that revealed the heart that our mm -hmm. community had. In some ways, you know, just like a lot of urban areas, uh, it's easy for us to be so busy and unaware of each other, but um, that in this terrible tragedy, it, it woke us up mm. uh, in a very mm. dramatic, intense, difficult, but also, uh, you know, much like the redemptive story of your family's journey, I think there's a redemptive story of Willowdale's journey uh, and how community leaders have sought uh, even more so to work together to know each other and just the conversations like i remember uh at the um at the sites where everyone was putting flowers and and cards i, I remember just seeing people talk to each other and you you just knew that a week ago before that incident they would have just walked by each other mm -hmm. and they would have been on their cell phone and and maybe two people of different cultures might not have just, you know, gone, gone past a language barrier. But in that challenging, difficult moment, people stepped out of their comfort zone, uh, just like you have stepped out of your comfort zone to now be running a foundation. Uh, and I, I think like that, if anything, that's what uh, inspires me the most about you and your family, because I when I see you guys and like, I saw your dad, uh, I think he was, he plays piano, right? I think there was like a video of him that when they moved the piano uh, that he donated to the gazebo at Mel Lassman. 
you, you know, you you guys just seem like really loving, really humble people. Uh, and and this tragedy kind of puts you guys out in the front, like in front mm -hmm. of everyone in a moment of difficult pain. But what a redemptive story, just how you've channeled the pain into something so beautiful that there is an ongoing legacy that will continue. Uh, and, you know, North Shore Women's Shelter has just gone through a tremendous renovation. Uh, it, you know, the work they're doing is so beautiful and important. And you guys are now pivotal in that journey of supporting women, you know, probably some of their uh, clients are from this community. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for, uh, I know for many people, you know, you don't choose, you didn't choose to take this bungee jump. Uh, but in some ways, like when the invitation was made, you said yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so- That's I an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, it's an interesting way of putting it. We never, we had never, we had never, when this, when everything happened, I remember we had a, a media reporter who's a very close friend of ours who lives in the neighborhood. And we, you know, I was concerned because there was a lot of attention. Like I heard stories of NBC on Young Street with four tents. And like we had people, I had people across Canada call us, say, is everything okay? Cause before, before we even knew what was going on, people from the States, and our biggest concern as a family was like, holy smokes, like who the hell is going to reach out to us? Like, I don't want to deal with the media. Like, I don't want to deal with any of this. We have enough on our plate. So we didn't really want to be in the limelight at all. It wasn't until we started the foundation and we said, you know what? If people want to talk to us, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to have a conversation with, with us or the foundation, it's not going to be about the incident. It's not going to be about the tragedy. It's going to be about what we can do different, how we can improve, how we can help others. And it wasn't until that point that we said, okay, let's go bring on the media. Like who wants to talk to us? Like, let's go. We're, we're doing this. We're not doing it for us. I'm not, I don't, I don't care to be on the media, but I'm going to do it because it helps others. I got enough on my plate, but if it's going to help others, I will absolutely, you know, do as much of these as possible. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, your story and just channeling it and being the inspiration on a path that, you know, certainly you did not choose. Uh, it has chosen you in a way. I, I um, was wondering if you would, wouldn't mind sharing your favorite memory with Anne-Marie as a, uh, you know, like, I hope everyone will consider next Friday night have a date night, get a babysitter, go for a great night of entertainment. You won't regret it. You won't yeah. regret it. And get to know in a you know, very real way, the beautiful light, the passion, the zest for life. I think it's all captured in you know, this night that you have planned. Um, but if there's just one you know, memory of like something you shared with your mm -hmm. sister that could help us also carry a piece of her in our hearts. Um, yeah, if you could share something with us. Uh, Lily, you almost had me right to the end. I was keeping it together. Um, so it was it was shortly before she was killed. Um, our daughter was about eight months at the time, and we couldn't we could never get her to sleep. Like we just we couldn't lay her down. So we you know we I'd be pacing up and down. We ended up getting this meta, um, workout ball and we used to like hold my daughter and kind of bounce on the, on, the, on the workout ball. And it was just my wife and I that could do it. We're the only ones that could, could get her to go to sleep. And it was, I was busy with something. I had a, a webinar or something like that. And my sister was home. I said, Emery, why don't you come down? Can you help, you know, can you help look after our daughter? And she said, okay, absolutely. I didn't even blink and I was downstairs in two seconds. I used to live in the basement apartment and, you know, she took, my daughter into the bedroom while I was doing the work and she and um, and she held her and she got her to sleep on the ball and I remember seeing her face like she was like so excited and she was like I did it like she says leave I'm like thank you <laughs> like thank you so it was just it's just a touching moment that's probably the one that stands out the most probably because it was 
one of the last moments I remember of her, but also such a powerful moment because it was a connection with my daughter and just something that, you know, she was able to accomplish. Not easy to put a baby to sleep. We all, yeah. I mean, parent will remember those days, but um, yeah, again, just capturing how she would take on any challenge and ace it. <laughs> yeah. way, right. Totally. Um, and I hope, I hope that you share that memory with your daughter um, that, you know, your auntie held you and was able to, you were just at home in her arms, just like yeah. you were with mom and dad. I hope she carries that with her. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. We're going to let her know that and make sure she understands. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Is there anything else that you would like to share with, uh, you know, neighbors here in Willowdale, uh, especially, you know, about next uh, Friday's show? Yeah, I would say get, get your tickets. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be an incredible evening. And we've talked about it a little bit here already, but you really, I was, I, I was blown away and I was a part of the preparations for 2019 pre COVID. And I was blown away with just the evening. And we're just trying to take it up another gear this year and just bring out, I wouldn't say better, necessarily better performances, but just uh, a, a much more, um, not even extravagant, but kind of an, another level in terms of um, professionalism, I guess you want to call it. Not the performance from 2019 weren't professional, but just we're just trying to continue to improving. It's going to be, it's going to be an evening with just tons of great, great performances. So please come join us. And, uh, you know, we're scrolling the link uh, on the bottom there, domicofoundation.org. Please do visit the website, get your tickets. And uh, thank you so much, Nick. Thank you for everything you do. I just can't help but think, wow, you're, you know, you're a dad. Uh, you are a, you know, director of a foundation. You're also a, an entertainment producer now, <laughs> a show producer. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I think you have definitely piece, you know, the same DNA as your sister in many ways. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's amazing what you can do when you don't sleep much. <laughs> well, I hope you get some rest before next Friday because I'm sure you won't be sleeping that night. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I will. We'll see you soon. And um, yeah, let us know whenever we can support you. We'll be here for you, Nick, thanks and so. your parents as well. And thanks again for having us. It was great to see you again. Amazing. Yeah. And I just want to, to echo that. Thank you, uh, Nick, for joining us and, and being on tonight's episode and, um, and sharing so much with us here on Meet Your Neighbor. Once again, down at the, the bottom of the screen there, you can visit domicofoundation.org slash events. And, you know, the cherry on top, too, is I think, you know, as a live performer myself, seeing your foundation bringing live performance back in in such a beautiful way as well and bringing such a diverse group of artists together for such a beautiful cause is uh is super inspiring to me to see as well and i've seen frank spadone perform uh in the past and he's hilarious and um it's it's a really really great lineup uh so definitely looking forward to it we just had one of my coworkers being like can you look after the kids on uh the third uh so sorry maria no I, i'm gonna be there um <laughs> but Thank you again. And uh, to everyone who joined us and watched tonight, thank you. We'll see you next time. Same time, same place, new neighbor. Next week, we'll be joined by Laura Puris from Life Spring Church. We'll be talking about her experiences in Willowdale. And also, it'll be a chance to get pumped up for the Christmas parade happening on December 4th. So for more information on everything going on with NeighborLink, uh, you can head to NeighborLink.org. Uh, lots of exciting things. But until then, uh, we'll bid you a, a adieu, North York. Uh, go out there and have yourself the most wonderful week. Thanks again, Nick. Uh, good night, Nick. Good night, Lily. And uh, good Thanks night, North York. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.